I will lay out the general process to determine the moments on an indeterminate beam using the moment distribution method. There are five general steps. First step is to determine the stiffness factor. Second step is to determine the distribution factors. Third step is to determine the fixed end moments. Fourth step is to distribute the moments. The fifth step is to carry over the moments. And we're gonna go over each one of the steps in order to make it more clear. A sixth step would be to repeat steps four and five until the moments are small and not significant. I will go through step one and explain it for different beam and conditions. If we have a beam span with both ends fixed, then the stiffness factor for that span is as follows. If the beam span has one end pin or roller, then the stiffness factor for the span is as follows. The second step is to determine the distribution factors. I am going to use the following continuous beam to show how to determine the distribution factors for different beam span and conditions. Node A is fixed, so it will not distribute any moment. Therefore, distribution factor from A to B is zero. Node D is an overhang and it will not take or distribute any moment. Therefore, distribution factor from C to D is zero. Node C will distribute all its moment back to node B. Therefore, distribution factor from C to B is one. Node B is pinned, but it's not at an end. It will distribute the moment to nodes A and C. Portion that would be distributed to nodes A and C depend on the stiffness factor of each span and it will be distributed proportionally as follows. Next step is to determine the fixed end moments. This depends on the type of loading over each span, its end supports and its length. There are diagram tables for different type of loads. These are just a couple of examples. The fourth step is to distribute the moment at each knot to the adjacent spans. We need to do this with the following equation. The fifth step is to carry over the distributed moments to the opposite end from where they are coming using the following rules. I always like to use a table like this to keep track of my work. Please check my other videos with examples on using this same theory for beams and frames. Thank you for watching. I would like to ask for your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you.